I'm Alex O'Neill, a national security researcher focusing on emerging technology, cyber threats, and illicit finance. Today, I'm going to speak about cryptocurrency mixers and how bad actors exploit them, particularly North Korean cyber criminals. So what exactly are crypto mixers? Mixers are blockchain-based platforms that enable cryptocurrency holders to obscure the provenance of their funds. Some high-profile mixers like Tornado Cash and Sinbad in particular have been in the news recently for helping North Korean cyber criminals and other malign actors launder illicit digital assets. The idea behind mixers is that many different users essentially deposit their funds they wish to anonymize into the platform, which then blends the funds together in a large pool before redistributing them to their respective owners in exchange for a small fee. This process makes it much harder to trace the origins or ownership of the mixed assets. In practice, though, mixers aren't perfect, and sophisticated investigators can often trace or demix fund trails that run through these platforms. Mixers provide cryptocurrency holders with increased anonymity. To be sure, there are plenty of legitimate use cases for increased digital financial privacy. The classic examples are that a citizen of an authoritarian country might wish to avoid drawing government attention when donating to an activist group, or an investor might wish to avoid scrutiny after making a large transaction. In practice, though, many people use mixers for illicit purposes, as the increased privacy they afford can help facilitate money laundering and digital financial crime. North Korean cyber criminals are some of the biggest mixer users. North Korean actors have stolen billions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency over the last five years or so, and mixers play a key role in the laundering process that underpins the North Korean cyber criminal model, helping convert tainted funds into cleaner, more usable assets. Virtual asset holders wishing to mix their funds, whether for legitimate or illicit purposes, can choose from an array of mixers with characteristics that cater to different needs. One key distinction is between custodial and non-custodial mixers. Custodial models involve users actually relinquishing their funds to the service, while non-custodial platforms never actually take custody of the funds and rely instead on smart contracts, which are blockchain-based programs that execute automatically when certain conditions are met. Mixers also typically operate only on a certain blockchain, like the Bitcoin or Ethereum networks, but software protocols called bridges enable users to move their assets across blockchain networks with ease. This is a really serious problem, as the proceeds from North Korea's revenue-generating cyber operations go to support the Kim regime's nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs to further develop North Korea's cyber capabilities and to undermine the effects of UN sanctions, among many other malign purposes. North Korean actors' heavy use of mixers presents both a problem and an opportunity. While mixers protect a crucial revenue stream, North Korea's reliance on them creates vulnerability to interventions that could significantly degrade their ability to monetize crypto theft. For roughly the past two years, a coalition of governments led by the United States has been responding aggressively to the mixing platforms that facilitate North Korea's malign cyber activities. In May 2022, the U.S. Treasury sanctioned the platform Blender, marking the first time a mixer had been designated. The most prominent action against mixers came in August 2022, when the U.S. government sanctioned Tornado Cash, a non-custodial mixer on the Ethereum blockchain that had achieved notoriety for enabling all kinds of cyber criminals to launder their illicit crypto funds. North Korean actors had passed more than $1 billion worth of stolen virtual assets through Tornado Cash prior to the sanctions designation. That action raised novel questions about U.S. authorities' ability to sanction non-traditional entities, in this case a purportedly decentralized mixing service running software code to facilitate illegal activity. Since then, the coalition has taken aim at a number of other mixing platforms using sanctions, takedowns, arrests, fines, and other tools. While these measures have proven quite effective against the individual platforms they target, they don't seem to have seriously affected North Korea's overall capacity to launder illicit funds. Tornado Cash is still active, albeit less effective, and replacement services have emerged for the ones that have shut down. As this urgent threat rapidly evolves, responsible authorities are working to innovate and develop new tools for countering digital illicit finance, especially North Korean cybercrime. You can find out more in my new paper called Upholding North Korean Sanctions in the Age of Decentralized Finance, part of a series of RUSI research projects funded by the U.S. Department of State to understand and mitigate obstacles to U.N. sanctions implementation.